Hello, hello. Hello, hello, Inject Portal Games. This is Portal Games vlog. We record every single day 100 episodes for 100 days. And today I'm discussing the brilliance and strategy tips of uh, Dreadful Circus. I'm going to tell you how Bruno designed this amazing, amazing game and how you can play this game smarter. So it is uh, in one part the game design lesson, in one part how to win uh, Dreadful Circus. Dreadful Circus is a set collection game. We are going to play for a couple of rounds, depending how many players you are playing. And uh, at the end of the game, we will have in front of us a couple of cards, and these cards will modify. And scoring and behind our screens, each player has a screen, we'll have a bunch of different tokens. And these tokens, of course, also provide us points. So we are trying to get sets of different tokens. We want to have a set of different cards and that combined will give us victory point. The game has a ton of uh, table talk, a ton of interaction when we are bribing each other, giving each other uh, offers, uh, trying to make other player not make an offer, sabotaging him. So lots of fun around the table. But besides the fun, besides the table talk, there is so much smart decision in the game and I will show you how Bruno designed these decisions into the game system. First decision of the game is that in the setup phase we received eight cards. We look through them carefully and this is our plan for the game because one of these cards we are going to play right now in the setup phase in front of us and it will be our first way of score points. So we will somehow reveal our strategy. Now I have these eight cards and I can go for the frosty cones and it means that I'm going to play for the orange cards and everyone at the table will understand that, that I'm going for the orange cards. Or maybe I will play the Jones of the Mantis and this card gives me two special tokens and we all at the table understand that this is my goal for this game. So the first choice we have, we have the whole bunch of cards uh, to choose from and now we need to reveal something to our other players. And so the cheap tip for you, please reveal as not much as possible. You want to have a super super secret plan for your game, so reveal something that is not revealing your whole strategy. If I play this game, I would uh, definitely not play this steam train and we'll get back to it uh, at the end of the game. So yeah, I think I will go with the uh, count as a two tokens. So I would go with this uh, mantis. I'm showing everyone that I'm good in the uh, green tokens, but it is not showing my whole strategy. Every other player at the table is doing the same, so they are going to flip their cards and the first round begins, but before it begins, we already know what other players try to achieve in this very game. That was the brilliance number one. In each round, uh, one of the players will pick one of the remaining seven cards they have in the card, in the, in the hand, and reveal it and show it to anyone else and put it on the offers. For instance, I could say, hey guys, I want to sell you Master of the Strings and I put this card on the table and now everyone at the table can make me an offer. So now, what's the strategy behind that? The strategy behind that is that I, knowing and in each round knowing more and more about the strategy of other players, I will now know which player would love to have this card in their tableau and which player don't care about this card. So my choice of which card I am putting right now on the offer is based on what I already know about other players. And now the brilliance from Bruno number two. They are putting the offer. They have the special wagons, wagon like that, the, this is a secret box. And in this box, they will put some offer. They will put some of the tokens they have behind their screens. Oops, that was not smart. And they will slowly, yeah, yeah sorry for the mess and they will slowly come to me with one offer from Mr. Richard and one offer from this voodoo uh, sorcerer if we playing, uh, for instance, if we could play uh, with them. And the brilliance from the Bruno in this game is that I need now to pick which wagon, which box I want to check. I will check what Mr. Richard offered me, for instance. I see the offer and now it's my decision. Either I accept it without looking at any other offers, either I refuse it and I will not have chance to get back to this. So it may be the case that the Richard put quite a good offer, but I wanted more, so I refuse it, but all other offers on the table are actually worse. So I ended up with just a bunch of crap as an offer. 
where is the strategy here? The strategy here is that when I offer, for instance, this particular card, I know which player at the table wants it the most, and then I can expect from them a very good offer. Of course, there's a place for the bluffing, there's a place for some cheating, uh, but basically I know who would be interested in this offer. And what is more, I remember that in the past round, Richard offer was accepted, so he already spent some tokens, giving them to other player, and this dude haven't bought any card, so he has a ton of tokens behind his screen because none of his offers were accepted, so he is desperate you know, to get something, so maybe I should check his offer, because he clearly has some tokens behind his screens. So there's a lot of double thinking, uh, triple thinking, additional layers of understanding, first of all, who wants this card desperately, knowing what they are going after, and knowing which of these guys should have more tokens than other guys, so he is more rich to give us. So this is a brilliance number one, a brilliance number two from Bruno, that we have to look at the offer and accept it or refuse it before knowing any other offers. And then your strategy tip, understand who are you dealing with, what they are going after, and how much tokens they might have behind the screens. Ready for number three? He's ready. The third brilliance of this game is that we have so many different uh, currencies in the game. We have a contract, for instance. This is a contract for uh, showing our circles in London. And this is our token for showing a contract for showing our circles in Praga. So we have different contracts. And uh, for having a majority in contracts, you get victory points. For having different contracts, you get victory points. So with these contracts, you can play a lot of different uh, things. And on top of that, we have cards like that, that gives us uh, free tokens of particular uh, type, so contracts. And the other one are money, and we have also three types of money. We have a, a copper coins, we have a silver coins, we have a gold coins. <clears throat> so altogether we have four different currencies, uh, different types of the, of the tokens, and these tokens will score us points at the end of the game for different sets we have, but these tokens are also the currency we are buying cards. So it may be the case that I just put amazing offer into the wagon, or maybe he did, I, didn't, I don't play that stupid, he put a ton of tokens, he puts me the offer, I look at this, oh my god, he's crazy, I'm accepting the offer, I'm taking the offer, he's getting this card he wanted, but basically he spent so much resources, he spent so much victory points in this bid, that although he has this amazing card, he will most likely lose, because he paid too much in these currencies. So I love this uh, element of, in many, many games. This is not a new mechanism, that you are using your resource in game, uh, that is your end game scoring. I remember from many, many years ago, the first game I saw this mechanism was EVO. Did you play EVO? EVO. Did you guys play EVO? Put in the comments, the old game from, I think it was from Asmodee, before Asmodee became the Asmodee. Uh, old EVO game, and uh, we were bidding in this game for the gens to modify our dinosaurs. But these gen, for these gens we were paying with victory points, like strike victory points. Uh, we were bidding and we were just deducting uh, on our victory points uh, track, and it was for me like, oh my god, this is so cool, we are paying with victory points. Here is quite the same, we are paying, we are buying cars with these tokens, and these tokens we need them at the end of the game for all this set collection. That was Bruno's smart actions number three. You ready for number four? So when the game progresses and when we see how the strategies of each of the players is, is, is going on, because they will have this cast. Uh, can we have a B-roll here so I can I can show it here uh, for the players? Uh, after a couple of rounds, after a couple of, of rounds, the table, for instance, will look like that, that he has already these uh, three cards Nah. So we know what he's doing, we know what he's aiming at, we know how powerful he is. And now we have this amazing card, and luckily I really do it. I have this amazing card, Frosty Cons. With these two orange cards, it makes a perfect set and gives him a ton of victory points. And this is the last card I have in the offer, so I have to put it in the offer. So now my another layer of strategy another layer of thinking and double thinking is that I can expect from Mr. Richard that for his discount he will pay a lot. Do I want this money? Do I want this offer? Should I sell this card to Mr. Voodoo Sorcerer? And I know he will pay me less. I know I will earn less. 
but overall this card gives no bonuses to Mr. Voodoo. So maybe I prefer this card to be there, just get a couple of coins, but not accept this insanely awesome probably offer from Mr. Richard because that would give me him so much points. So another layer of strategy is understanding uh, what are the consequences of selling a card to a particular player. And sometimes we are going to take the lower offer just to make sure that the card doesn't end up at one of the players additional layer of strategy and tactic and thinking. Are you ready for the next step? I guess you are. The brilliance of the, of, of the game is also seen in the final step of the game, because in the, at the end of the game, <clears throat> when we put on the offer one card, another card, another card, and we will end up with two cards in our hand. One of these cards will be discarded, and one of these cards will be put as a final blow to our opponents. We will play the last card from our hand, we will play as a last card played in front of us. So for the whole game, as we started with these eight cards, at the very beginning of the game, we put the first card in front of us. It gives us some ability, it gives us some bonuses, and it reveals our strategy plan. Then from all other cards, we have seven cards, six of them we'll put on the offer, and these six cards will end up at the other player's table. So we need to distribute them very, very smartly to sabotage them, to get them in the wrong places. And then this is the last card that we kept for the whole game. And we just played, and it's amazing. And it closes the whole strategy we had for the whole game, and it makes all other players think, ah, you have it. And you say, yes, I had it. And I win the game. So there is a ton of layers, a ton of strategies, ton of fun, ton of brilliant, smart, simple design decisions that Bruno did in this game. Uh, and on one hand, when you pass people playing this game at the convention and you see, see laughs and screams and t table talk and uh, bribing and you say, oh, this is like a party game. It's a party game-ish game with this ton of interaction, but there is a smart Euro game. This is a smart set collection game in which you think about each move and you might be smiling, you may be laughing, you may be winking to the players but you make a very smart decision which card to buy, which card to sell, and which card to sell to whom. Interesting? I hope. Uh, so now it's time for the tractor. Where is my tractor? Thank you for watching. That was another episode of Portal Games Vlog. We are almost in the middle of the experiment. Uh, I promise you we will record 100 vlogs for 100 days to try to grow this channel. So far it's not going amazing. So far we are growing, but very, very slowly. Uh, soon we will have uh, 50 episodes done. Thank you for watching, thank you for staying with us. Uh, as always, I appreciate your feedback, I appreciate uh, your comments, your thumbs up under the video. Let me know if that was interesting, if discussing uh, the design process of designers, design, discussing strategy is something that is interesting for you, YouTubers. And as always, thank you for the feedback. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to be with me every single day, except the weekends, and share. Take care, see you tomorrow, bye bye.